automobile is the most vehicle ever constructed. It must start in the coldest weather, operate over the roughest terrain, be punished by a man, answer the gentle touch of a woman. Polaris Industries of Roseau, Minnesota designed it and built it. This is the story of how a small farm implement manufacturing company went on to create a lasting legacy for winter travel. It became a world leader in outdoor power sport activities. Even if you had no idea what a snowmobile is, you probably recognize the name of the company that started it all. Polaris, the North Star. Our story begins with a young guy who was serving in the U.S. Navy during World War II who sent $11 of his Navy paycheck back home every week to one of his friends who was starting a new business venture in a small town in Roseau, Minnesota. David Johnson would eventually come home to co-found Hattin, Hoist, and Derek with his friends Edgar and Alan Hattin. In the beginning, they were building egg equipment, mainly in their tiny little shop. Their first successful machine that they created was called the Straw Chopper. Business was okay, but it wasn't the greatest. Until one day, the visionary behind the company, Edgar Hattin, took a two-week sales vacation in California. David took on a side project for a local trapper. He was tasked with building a sled that could power itself through snow. Those were the requirements. David got to work as soon as he could. He took a chain from a grain auger, a steering wheel from a Model T Ford, a Briggs and Stratton motor, and an old Chevy pickup bumper that he fashioned into skis. And thus, an industry was born. When Edgar Hattin returned back from California to his tiny little shop, he was more than a little angry at the sight of this new contraption. I wanted nothing to do with the thing at first, I told my brother-in-law. David wasted our time and money, and I wanted no more of it. As a man who was so invested in his farm implement company, he later had a change of heart when the first machine sold for $465 in order to make payroll. He would later go on to split with the company and found his own snowmobile company in a town about an hour away. But more on that later. Despite his brother's skepticism, Alan and David continued to build machines on the side which paved the way for their first model. The success of the Snow Traveler in 1956 would have Hattin, Hoist, and Derek change their name to the name we're all familiar with, Polaris, where they would exclusively manufacture Polaris snowmobiles. To measure the success and dependability, as well as a way to promote the new machine, Edgar commissioned a 1,200-mile trek across the Alaskan wilderness with three machines. They lugged 900 pounds of provisions on toboggans and endured minus 40 degree temperatures to complete the journey in 21 days. But shortly after returning home, Edgar left the company to start his own little company called Polar Manufacturing in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. He later changed the name of Polar Manufacturing to another name that you might know, Arctic Cat. Ring a bell? After scoffing at the original idea of the snowmobile, he wholeheartedly embraced the entire industry. He is now known as the grandfather of snowmobiles. He transformed the clunky snow machine into a nimble recreational toy. Through his innovations alone with Arctic Cat, he created an industry based on his interpretation of the spirit of adventure. Uh, some several years ago, uh, in fact, in 1956, a gentleman walked into our place of business. His name was Pete Peterson. 
And he was to request that we build him some type of a vehicle where he could sit on it and travel through the snow, which we did. And we found this was a thing that uh, had a lot of romance. It was a fun thing to do. And we tried to sell it. People wouldn't buy it. We went to phone companies, power line companies, and stuff like that. And finally established a market through a need market. And then the fun market came into its own. And at that point in time, there was no way that we could possibly conceive that this machine would ever be used for racing. So what happened to Polaris after Edgar left the company? Well, by now, Bombardier was quickly making a name for itself with the success of their Skidoo. Side note, the Skidoo name was actually a typo in a brochure. The model was actually supposed to be called the Ski Dog, but the printing company changed the last letter to an O, and they just went with it. In 1964, Polaris released the Comet to compete with the Skidoo. However, the Comet was unreliable. It was so bad it could barely drive through the snow. Imagine that. They had to recall the machine to avoid bankruptcy. It was that terrible. In 1965, after barely surviving as a company, they developed the Mustang, which boosted sales enough so that they could continue to innovate and release better models in the years following. Their successful rise to power in the 60s and 70s cemented the company's reputation and helped them become the world's leader in that industry. Then, in the 1980s, they shifted their focus to building ATVs to compete with Honda, who were starting to become popular in the US. Polaris then became the first company to domestically produce all-terrain vehicles. And since then, they've specialized in more than just power sports, such as construction equipment, motorcycles, military applications, and even electric vehicles. The list goes on and on. And I'm sure I've left out a few important companies that they've acquired throughout the years. In 2009, there were only three main factories in the U.S. Now, there are over 12 on three different continents. They've become so large that I was shocked to discover everything they've accomplished since I've worked there in 2010. That's right, I was installing the suspension components on ATVs and side-by-sides for the 2009 through 2010 models. So, if you have one of those model years, it's a good chance that I personally assembled your quad. I must have done thousands of machines and even stamped the VIN numbers on razors on a separate assembly line in the original plant. To me, Polaris is more than just a recreational vehicle company. It's a part of my history and the town I grew up in. It's an honest company from humble beginnings. What started out as a weird side project for the man who would be considered the Henry Ford of snowmobiles is now a global success 